You remember the television show Hee Haw? Mm -hmm. I loved the sketch comedy on that show, and one of my favorites was when some combination of the cast saying gloom, despair, and agony on me. Then you remember they had some kind of verse that went along with it that had some kind of comedic value, usually having something to do with that week. And sometimes when I hear people complaining about the world that we live in, that song's running through my head. Because it seems like many people see the world that way. They, 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 they'll say things like, what has the world come to? But was yesteryear really all so much better? Of course, I know we all tend to have a particular fondness for our own childhood years. That's normal. But it seems to me that every generation has its benefits and its drawbacks. I mean, you know, if we were living at the turn of the 20th century here, most of us would probably be down in Packingtown working for six cents an hour. And almost everything we make would go to the company to pay for the house we lived in and what we had left over would go to the company store to pay for our food. Most of our kids wouldn't even make it into young adulthood because they'd be dead from accidents or disease. And when you think about that, well, you know, the things that we gripe about today look a little bit mild. It's easy to dream about yesterdays and to think that surely nothing can get worse. But that's a fantasy. Human beings have this remarkable gift for remembering the good and forgetting the bad. If that were not so, there would never be second children born. <laughs> See, but the reality is really quite different from the dream. This coming Thursday, we celebrate what's called the Feast of the Ascension of our Lord. And we'll be celebrating here with a service of evening prayer on Thursday. See, when, when Jesus was ready to ascend into heaven, well, the disciples were, were afraid. He had warned them frequently that life was not going to be an easy walk for them. Now, all people suffer the effects of living in a sinful, broken world. No one escapes the reality of sin, but Jesus told us, that it was going to be harder for us for a couple factors. First, you and I have the requirements of God's law, and unbelievers are not under that burden. But second, and probably more importantly, see, we're baptized children of God. And when we were baptized, we were called to Satan's full attention. And he does not care for us. Not one little bit, especially when we are worshiping God and leading others to do so as well. So life without Jesus physically on this earth is kind of a frightening proposition for all of us, but especially for the disciples who woke up with him right there beside them every morning, teaching them and inspiring them and leading them, and I can imagine them really singing gloom, despair, and agony on me. I mean, I can picture Peter, James, and John, and Andrew sitting on their fishing boats alongside the uh, Sea of Galilee with their overalls on, singing that song. I know I feel like singing that song from time to time. And I know that when I feel like singing that song, it's not comedic. It's not a routine. Most people have a dark side. You know, we put on the happy face for work and for most of our friends and for church, of course, because we know better. I mean, if we didn't, 60 million people would be running up to us asking us what's wrong. You'd have every person this side of creation wanting to know what's the problem because in case you did not get the memo, you're never supposed to be unhappy. It bothers people. When you're not happy, because, you see, when we're unhappy, it reminds everyone else that they're not fully happy either. All of us are familiar with gloom, despair, and agony. Yours is different from mine, because we all experience our own little personal slice of hell, don't we? You probably would never understand the darkness in my life, and I probably couldn't understand completely the darkness in yours, but... We all know it's there. And that's why Jesus left behind 
a couple promises for us. We know that he promised to send the Holy Spirit to empower us during those difficult times, that the Holy Spirit would work through the word of God and through the holy sacraments to arm us against the slings and the arrows of Satan that would be coming and to strengthen us in every situation that we face. That's the promise we're all fully aware of. But there's one promise that we don't often remember, and it's the one that we celebrate today. The historic church called this day Rogate, Rogate Sunday. If you're little kids growing up in the Lutheran church, you might remember the old hymnal had Rogate Sunday. It comes from the Latin word to ask. Because Jesus says in our gospel for today, truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he'll give to you. The promise is clear. Whatever you ask of the Father, he will hear you. The path that we walk is difficult. It's supposed to be. It's by the very nature of us being made holy in baptism and walking life through a world that's corrupted by sin. We are oil and water with the world. But we find our joy in knowing that whatever we're doing, wherever we are, God is right there with us and he hears every single thing we ask. And the best part of it is you can't be wrong. No matter what you ask. Because God is a perfectly loving parent and he's never going to give you anything that hurts you. So ask. You have not because you ask not. And even if you mess it all up because of the corruption of sin that is within you, God also promises to take that and to turn it for good. Romans 8, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. So ask. When you feel gloom and despair and agony, descending upon you. Ask. He is there and he will answer. And remember that gloom, despair, and agony are really just feelings. Feelings brought on by the irritations, the frustrations, the discomforts, the unpleasantness of living in a corrupted world. But God is not a feeling. He's real. He's eternal. He is all-powerful. So ask. Hear his promise in our gospel for today. <laughs> Whatever you ask of the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Be strengthened by him actually entering your body through his body and blood in the holy sacrament and know that gloom and despair and agony are neither real nor permanent <clears throat> but God is real and your life with him is eternal Please rise and confess the faith with me in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, Father, 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 Father.